Virtualization is awesome. VMware is probably the biggest player when it comes to virtualization. They've got some awesome technology that's out there that's used by thousands and thousands of businesses around the world called VMware ESXi, VMware vCenter, essentially a suite of applications to virtualize your servers, your desktops, and you don't have to have physical computers for each individual thing. Rather, you have now virtualization environments, you have what's called hypervisors, where you've got servers, you've got computers that are running this ESXi software, and then allows you to manage all of this in this virtualization environment. Above that, you've got this thing called vCenter, and of course, vCenter manages all of your ESXi hosts. Without vCenter, you can't do a whole lot. If you want the benefits of high availability, so that if one host dies, the other host can still do its thing. If you want the benefits of being able to move VMs from one host to another, then that's where vCenter comes in. We're gonna be talking about a few things in this video, specifically around migrations, vMotion, and DRS. What are the differences between each of these in a VMware environment? I love tech and hopefully you do too. And if you do, why don't you smash that subscribe button and on the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Really appreciate it. A whole heap of you watch my channel and that is awesome, but a whole heap of you are not actually subscribed. So if you wanna make sure that you keep up to date and you get rid of that algorithm them where YouTube doesn't want to suggest certain videos, click on that so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that we are releasing every single week. So let's talk a little bit about what each of these are, and then we'll show you on the actual VMware console how to actually set them up, how to configure them, and really get the most out of migrations, vMotion, and DRS, and all of that shebang. So we're here in our vCenter. We've got our production cluster. We've got 103. We've got our test cluster 104. This host is still in maintenance mode. What I'm going to do is just for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to move that 104 host into my production cluster. One other thing that is going to be important here is that your physical infrastructure, your physical server has CPU, has RAM, and has graphics and all of the other parts, right? And that is essentially the resources that your VMs are using. A VM that is allocated eight gig of RAM is gonna be using some of that RAM that is physically available on the ESXi host. So if you're gonna be moving a VM from one host to another, you of course wanna make sure that the resources are available on the other host. Now, what about storage? Storage can get a little bit tricky. We've got two different types of storage. You've got the storage that is built in directly on a computer on a server. We had our 103 host over here. Here's a list of my VMs. And now I can go into data stores and I've got two different data stores available here on this ESXi host. Data store one and Aguero NAS. Data store one is the data store that was automatically created when I built my ESXi host. This is the storage that is available on my ESXi host. Now, ESXi host 104, cannot actually see this data store one because this data store one is the physical storage that's part of 103. So when I'm moving a VM from one host to another, ideally you want to be moving the storage along with it. But in this case, how are you going to do this? But what I've actually got as well is I've got my Aguero NAS. Now the Aguero NAS is a NAS. It's a network attached storage that is attached on my network and I've actually added them both to 103 and 104. So both my 103 and 104 can also see Aguero NAS. And that's where we've actually been building some of our VMs. Our VMs are sitting on Aguero NAS. So now when I relocate a VM from one host to another, all I'm saying is that that VM, I now want you to move to this other host and this other host CPU and memory will now take advantage. But the actual storage will not change. We're not actually relocating the storage. You can migrate the storage as well, and we'll be covering that a little bit right now. So here we've got 103, 104. On 103, if I go into the VM section, I've got a number of VMs that are powered on and some that are powered off. You'll see in the little icon right here, the ones that have got the green arrow are powered on. You'll also notice that by the state, it actually says powered on, powered on, powered off, powered off, and powered on and a little bit more around the specs of that machine. 104 is currently in maintenance mode. So all of the VMs that are sitting on 104 are currently powered off, as you can see. But now let's remove 104 off maintenance mode. Gonna go into maintenance mode, and I'm gonna say exit maintenance mode. 
that host is now available to me. When a VM is powered off, you can easily move them between one host to another, between clusters, between data stores, without too much complication. But of course, that requires you to move a VM into powered off state. What you can actually do is with a technology called vMotion, you can actually move the VM from one host to another while the VM is still powered on. You don't have to power it down because if you need to power down a virtual server, then you're potentially gonna have a small outage. So wouldn't it be great if you could actually move it from one host to another while it's powered on. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just show you right in here, 104, I've got these, are, I mean, this is, there's this other one right here. We're not gonna to touch on this one, but we've got three VMs, Kali Linux 01, my Windows 11, and Windows 10 Virtual. Let's say my Windows 10, uh, my Windows 11 right here, my VM that, pa that is powered off, I wanna move it off 104 and move it onto 103. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on my Windows 11 right over here, and I'm gonna say migrate. What do we wanna do? Change the virtual machine, compute resources, storage, or both. Well, let's say I wanna change the compute resources. What this is referring to is that I'm going to migrate the virtual machine to another host or cluster. So I'm just gonna say, it's part of 104, so all the compute resources, which is the CPU, the RAM, all the other bits, are now going to be given to 103, and now I want to use the compute resources of 103. The second one is change storage only. So you can migrate the virtual machine's storage to a compatible data store or data store cluster. So what you could do is you could leave the VM running on 104, so the compute resources, the RAM, the CPU, etc., are being used on the 104 host, but the storage now is somewhere else. It's no longer as part of 104. Changing both compute resources and storage. We're gonna move the whole VM the compute resources, the CPU, the RAM, to another host, and we're also gonna point it to a new data store, to a new storage location. And then the last option is you can actually completely move that VM to another vCenter server altogether. So right now, the VM is powered on, so I can easily go and change compute resources only. Let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna say next. Now you'll notice that there are four hosts in here. Let's go ahead and select 103. Now this is a time issue that we've got over here. It's just more because the time is different and it's more than five minutes. That's what I'm getting this warning message, but we can select next. And we've got some underlying network. That network, of course, we had a virtual switch with some port groups and they're connected to a physical switch in the back end. Your network administrators are gonna look after those physical switches and perhaps they're on a specific IP range. So if you're happy with the VM network that you've selected, we can select next. And here's a summary of what's gonna happen. It's just going to change the compute resource only. Now this should work without problems because the VM is powered off. There's no issues around here. We're not using this vMotion technology just yet, which allows you to move VMs while they're powered on. With the VM powered off, you generally will not have problems moving it from one to another, as long as all the compatibility settings all match up. And we can now select finish. Down the bottom, you'll see that the relocate virtual machine has completed successfully. And now under 104, under VMs, I've now just got my Kali Linux and my Windows 10 virtual. Let's go into 103, and there it is. My Windows 11 is now running on my 103 host. Let's just go have a look at something else. So in my 103 host, I've got agu-dc-01, and I can't, I can't have this VM shut down. Well, can you actually move it while it's powered on? Well, let's try. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this one and I'm gonna say migrate. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move both the compute resources and the storage. So I wanna move it from the storage of 103, wherever that was connected to, to the storage of 104, but I also wanna move the compute. So I wanna use the CPU, the RAM, all of those resources now of my 104 host. Previously, it used to be my 103 host. So let's go ahead and select next. Where do we want to move it to? Well, I'm gonna say Australia, and I'm gonna say production. I'm gonna say it's gonna go into 104. Oh, there are compatibility issues. What's going on here? So let's just have a look, show details. It says that the vMotion interface is not configured. Because you don't have vMotion set up, you're not gonna be able to actually move a VM from one to another. Now, vMotion needs to be set up on the network side of things. Now, we're not talking about a physical network, we're not talking about physical switches, physical routers, subnets, VLANs. 
This now needs to, needs to be done on your virtual switches, on your virtual network within each individual ESXi host. We're gonna be configuring what's called a VM kernel port. You're essentially setting up a port on your virtual switch. So all of your traffic, when you are moving a VM from one host to another host, will be traveling over this VM kernel port, a dedicated port on your virtual environment, on your virtual network for vMotion traffic. You need to, of course, set this up on every single ESXi host that you want this ability to be done on. Now, one thing that you will need to be keeping in mind here is that this is going to use up network traffic. It's gonna use up some network traffic on your ESXi host. So if you have got an ESXi host that has just got one physical NIC, one physical port, then this is now gonna be traversing a lot more traffic, which is why there's always benefits to having additional ports, multiple network ports, on a ESXi host. The more you've got, the better load balancing you've got, but you could also set up one dedicated port for everything that is management related, including the vMotioning, for example, while the other one could be more for the operating system, doing its operating system tasks and being able to communicate with other services on your network. So you can actually dedicate certain ports for certain things. So let's now go ahead and set up our VM kernel port so that we can start using vMotion. So at the moment, vMotion is turned off. I've got my production cluster. I've got my individual ESXi hosts right over here. If I select my 103 host, I can go into networks. And here I see my VM network, my VM network fast, my VM network slow, as well as this section here on distributed switches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna right click on my 103 and I, right around the middle there, I've got add networking. So add networking, I'm now gonna be presented with some options. A VM kernel network adapter, the VM network TCP IP stack handles traffic for ESXi services such as, here we go, vMotion, iSCSI, NFS, fiber channel, this is FC, fiber channel over ethernet, fault tolerance, vSAN, host management, etc. So it's a dedicated port, a dedicated network adapter called VM kernel for doing all of these things. Then you've got a virtual machine port group for a standard switch, which is what you've seen right here. So those VM, those three VM networks that we've got are part of your standard port group for a standard switch or a physical network adapter. Physical network adapter handles the network traffic to other hosts on the network. In our case, we're gonna do a VM kernel network adapter. I'm gonna select next. Three options, an existing network, selecting an existing standard switch, or a new standard switch. We don't currently have an existing one, so we're gonna select an existing standard switch. So on what virtual switch are we gonna go create it? Well, it's completely up to you. If you've, only, if you've only got one virtual switch, you select your virtual switch. If you've got more than one, you select the virtual switch that is relevant for you. We're gonna say vSwitch zero, right there. We're gonna select now next. I now add some additional information, including the network label. What do we want to call this particular port? Well, to make it easy, I'm gonna, you can call it VM kernel, but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call it vMotion, okay? Do you want it to be part of a different VLAN? Now, we're not gonna cover too much about VLANing, but you can put an actual VLAN in here if you wanna look at segregating this even further, but you'll probably need to do that in consultation with your networking team. What IP do you wanna give it? IP version four, IP version six. MTU will leave as default, and the TCP IT stack being default, or you can actually go and change that. We're gonna leave that all as default, okay? So leaving it IP version four. Now what services do we want to turn on as part of this service? So vMotion of course is what we wanna be using. If you want other things to be running on here, you select the other things in here. But of course, if you wanna be very, very smart about how you're balancing your networking load, your bandwidth, you don't wanna be putting too many services on one individual port. Okay, so in my case, I'm just leaving it as vMotion. So vMotion is the name of it. It's gonna be using vMotion. We can select next. Now, IP address. Yes, here you have to set up an IP address for your vMotion. The vMotion port needs an IP address. Now you can leave it as obtain automatically, which is gonna be using some sort of a DHCP service. Or what I generally recommend is always setting a static IP address for your vMotion. So go ahead and add an IP address generally in the same IP range 
as your ESXi host, as your existing network, allocating an IP that is not being used, that is not allocated. Again, if you're doing this in a corporate environment, make sure that whatever IP you're allocating is not used elsewhere. So I'm gonna go ahead in here and put in my IP address. My IP range is on 172.16.1 and I'm gonna give it a 107 IP address. I'm gonna give it a subnet mask. Do you wanna do the default gateway? You can override the default gateway, but it already knows that it's on 1011. So I'm gonna leave that. And I've got some DNS servers already there. So I'm gonna leave the rest as the default. Let's update that. It's not gonna work otherwise. Okay, so this is my IP address of 107. We can now select next. Summary of what's gonna happen right into here. It's on vSwitch zero. It's gonna create vMotion using vMotion protocol and select finish. Okay, down the bottom, you'll see a few things have happened in my tasks. It selected the virtual NIC and it updated the network configuration. And now vMotion is set up on 103. So what I can do is I can go into the configure area. I've got a whole bunch of things in here that I can look at at configuring. Under the networking area, you can now see, here are my virtual switches. The one right there, it's called vSwitch0, and here is my vSwitch1. Nice little graphic, a virtual switch. And what about the physical ports? Well, here we go, I've got a physical adapter. This is the physical NIC on my physical ESXi host. On the back of my ESXi host, there's just one network point. And that's what that is, that's a one physical network point. And what have we got? Well, I've got two ports right here, plus these two networks right here. A management network, this is how I log into my host. I've got all these VMs that are running on this VM network. And here are the ports, VM network fast, and vMotion. There it is, the new port that we've just set on the IP address of 107 and VM switch one with my VM network slow, but it's not connected to any physical adapter. So if I was to move a VM into VM network slow, you'll actually lose network connectivity because physically there is no physical adapter connected to that ESXi, connected to that VM. So we're gonna do the same thing now on 104. 104, you'll notice that you've got a VM switch as well. Just the one, VM switch zero. It's just got management and a physical adapter. And of course my VMs, they're powered off at the moment, but under VM kernel ports, well, I don't have anything in here. So remember I can right click in there, or I can also click in here, add networking, I'm gonna go and set a new IP. It's an existing switch, VM switch zero. There you have it, new vMotion. So then we've got our new vMotion, VM kernel adapter. So now 103, 104 have both got vMotion. So I, so I can now, or vMotion, a VM over. Remember we looked at this one, DC01, it's currently powered on. I'm gonna go and migrate. We'll do both compute and storage. So remember this is running on. This is running on 103. We're now gonna move it over to my 104 little validation and it's now completed successfully. And that's because I've now got vMotion running on the two. Can now select that one. What storage do we wanna move it to? Well, Aguero NAS is also being visible by my 103. So both 103 and 104 can see my Aguero NAS. So I could just choose to leave my VM on that storage if I'm happy with that. Not a problem, you can definitely do that. Or I can move it to the 104 data store. Let's actually do that. Let's move it to the 104 data store. The VM network will leave them the same. Now here is where you wanna make sure that it's consistent because you want the VM network to be available on both to make sure, making sure that you're not losing any network connectivity. So you've got two options, schedule vMotion with high priority. So vMotion receives higher CPU scheduling preference relatively to normal priorities. vMotion might complete more quickly or you can schedule lower CPU scheduling to high priority migrations, you can extend vMotion duration. So you select the one that is recommended for you, depending on the load that you've got available. We'll leave it as the recommended and select next. Summary what's gonna happen and finish. You'll notice that down the bottom, we've now got a relocate virtual machine and it's now doing two things. It's moving the VM's resources from one to another. So in the background, there's these config files which you would have seen when we were looking at the actual VM summary of what's inside the data store. There's the VMDK file, which is where all the big hard drive is. And then there's all these other files, including some config files. The config files are now being updated to say, hey, you're now being managed by 104 instead of 103. And it's also relocating the storage, if you remember, from my Aguero NAS to my data store that is sitting directly on 104. Let's look at DRS. DRS, here it is. 
vSphere DRS. What is DRS? Well, DRS, you've got vMotion. vMotion is allowing you to migrate VMs from one host to another host without those VMs being shut down. Yes, you do it while they're live. So you as a VMware administrator, as a server administrator, you've got to be going and checking the monitoring, the performance of those hosts. And when things are running a little bit hot here or there, if there are specific conditions, you are manually moving one to another, selecting a VM that is on this host. You don't want that on that v on that host anymore. You need to move it over, maybe because there's more resources available on the other host. Well, DRS simplifies this whole thing by automating that entire process. DRS will actually be checking specific settings, specific config that is going on on your host and move those VMs over as it needs to. So we're gonna go ahead and turn DRS on. We're gonna click on edit right over here and I'm gonna go and turn it on. I'm doing this from the cluster, production cluster, where I've got a couple of ES6i hosts. They've got VM kernel ports configured. They've got vMotion switched on. We're already using high availability. Now we're gonna turn DRS on right over here. Automation level. DRS automatically places virtual machines onto hosts at VM power on and virtual machines are automatically migrated from one host to another to optimize resource utilization. There are a few different options here, manual, partially, and fully. Manual, not really gonna do much. So DRS generates both power on placement recommendations and migration recommendations for virtual machines. Recommendations need to be manually applied or ignored. So DRS is going to be actively checking the health and the performance of your hosts. And what the manual option will do, which is really nice to get started, is it'll recommend, it'll say, hey, Emilio, ESXi 03 is running out of CPU. It's running really, really hot. Maybe 90% of the CPU is being used. I recommend that you move this VM to 104 because 104, host 104, has got plenty of CPU. It'll give you a recommendation and then you, go and manually vMotion one of those VMs from 103 to 104. That's what manual is going to be doing. Partial, DRS automatically places virtual machines onto hosts at VM power on. Migration recommendations need to be manually applied or ignored. And then as we said, fully, it'll actually fully automatically migrate the VMs over. I personally like the fully automated, but what I recommend is that you play around with this. You wanna be very specific and very careful about what VMs are getting moved over here and there because sometimes you may not want VMs to be moved over. You've gotta be very, very well, very well aware of that. So maybe as a starting point, I recommend that you just start off with manual and just try it out for like a week. See how things are going. Have a look at the sort of recommendations that DRS is giving you before you then go and set them to partially first, and then perhaps fully automated later on. What is the migration threshold? Well, as it says, specifies how aggressive DRS recommends vMotions. Recommendations are generated automatically based on resources demands, demanded by the virtual machines, resource allocation settings, the reserve limits, etc., and the resources provided by each host, and the cost of migrating VMs. The more conservative, the less frequent the vMotions. So right over here, you see there's some settings. You can set it to version to number one, all the way up to number five. You can actually see a bit of a, a little bit of a summary here. So DRS will only apply recommendations that must be taken to satisfy cluster constraints like affinity rules, which will cover host maintenance. DRS will not try to correct host imbalances at this threshold. So you've got two main areas. On the very far left, you've got the conservative, less frequent vMotions. On the very far right, you've got aggressive, more frequent vMotions. It's great. You can actually set how aggressive you want vMotions to be moved. All the way over here, VMs are potentially going to be moving all over the place. You need to play around with this. You need to go and try this yourself. Start off with number one. Be very conservative. Just make sure that you are aware of what's going on, right? Maybe start off with some manual conservative and just check out what's going on, what recommendations, then move maybe move to fully automated with conservative and see what's going on. 
I've generally found in my experience over the years, conservative doesn't really do much. Doesn't really do much. You generally have to go a little bit higher up to actually see some of that DRS moving. But every environment is going to be different. Depending on your small, medium, or large environment, play around with this threshold. Start off small, move up. You don't also want just V, you know, v motions taking place all the time in the middle of the day. You may actually produce other issues in your environment. You may actually encounter some blips in the network, some ping, some drops of your packets. So just be very, very careful around that. Okay, so for now, we're gonna just leave it maybe at number four for this demo, but you do it the way that you need to. Predictive DRS, well, what's this? In addition to real-time metrics, DRS will respond to forecast metrics provided by vRealize. Only forecast metrics will, with high confidence uh, will be considered for DRS. So you can turn this on if you're using vRealize operations. If you're not using it, no need to turn it on. Virtual machine automation, override the individual virtual machine can be set for the VM overrides page. I, leave, I generally leave, leave that turn on. You wanna automate that process, okay? You can see some additional options around VM distribution and force a more even distribution of virtual machines across hosts in the cluster for availability. May see degradation of DRS when utilization when utilizing this setting. CPU over commits, power management, advanced options. There's some other parameters that you can actually pass. So you need to go in and try to do this yourself. Try to be very, very conservative upfront. Play around with these different sorts of settings. See how it's going and then tweak the settings as you go. You may want to take advantage of this VM distribution where you want the VMs to be evenly loaded perhaps or distributed across your host, but you may not want that. Okay, so with all of that settings set up, I'm gonna now say okay. Now from time to time, what you're gonna now find is in your task down the bottom, you're gonna see things happening. You're gonna see V motions taking place, VM moving from here to here going to do that automatically without you even having to touch anything. It'll give you some recommendations from time to time as well. You've now got the option to turn proactive HA to on if you so choose to use it. So we're going to turn proactive HA on. Automation level being manual or automated. Remediation. Oh, look at that. Down the bottom, you actually can see right there that it's actually started migrating this VM over automatically. I didn't do that. DRS did that and I'm gonna enable proactive HA against my cluster. So now I've got HA turned on, proactive HA turned on, DRS turned on. And really, if all of this is working well, it's all being configured properly, the environment should look after itself. So does that make it a little bit more clear? Why don't you let us know down below whether this helped? Let us know if you can now define the differences between the three a little bit and maybe let us know how you're gonna be maybe putting this in place in your own environment. And why don't you stay tuned for that next video where we continue talking about all things tech.